Hello, I am at the border of North Korea. In front of me, there is a military checkpoint. They are about to check my documents. There is no trick, there is no deception. We are really on the border of one of the most dangerous countries in the world. When we think of North Korea, we think of Kim Jong-un, son of Kim Jong-il and grandson of Kim Il-sung, supreme leader of North Korea and friend of Antonio Razzi and Dennis Rodman. We're talking about one of the most dangerous countries in the world with nuclear weapons and from which almost no one can enter or exit. And so I did the most obvious thing. I was in South Korea, I hired a local guide and after saying goodbye to the robots that managed my hotel, I got into a black van that took me to the border in less than an hour. The border is so close to the South Korean capital. After the big buildings, there were fields and then the barbed wire starts everywhere until we arrived at a huge parking bus area. Here, as you can see, all the buses. All right, her name is Kay, and she is my tour guide for now. Since the military has recently restricted the number of visits, we are joining another group, and since I did everything at the very last minute, we ended up finding this solution. Just to give you a bit of context, this is Imjingak Park. We are about 10 kilometers away from the border of North Korea, and this is the last tourist outpost where they've actually constructed all the museums and all the monuments for peace, you know, to remember the war. This is not the actual border, but instead, it's one of the billions of barbed wires that are there to secure anything. We can say that the Korean War is one of those events that we have definitely heard about. But we don't give it the same importance as we give to the World Wars and the Vietnam War or other more European wars. However, it still caused more than 2 million deaths. Just to give you an idea, this is the map. We are right here in the super touristy park and about 10 kilometers away from here is the border of North Korea. The border is very peculiar because it is not a single border but three borders. So there's the military border which is the official one and then uh, two kilometers from there is the South Korean border and then another two kilometers towards North Korea there's another the North Korean border. The one in the middle is the demilitarized zone. After that we're gonna head over to check out the infiltration tunnel. It's really cool. And then I need to figure out where we can get to because they closed some entrances. And like everything is, you know, totally fortified with barbed wire all over the place. This right here is a Buddhist bell that symbolizes peace and all, but the most silly thing is that you just have to go and buy a ticket for 10,000 Korean won and you can ring it seven times. It's business. Check it out. This here's an altar facing North Korea where South Korean families come to remember perhaps their deceased relatives. Who died in North Korea? Just imagine how many families are separated. There are still more than 5,000 families and they can only see each other during very rare occasions when the two governments actually managed to reach an agreement. Since 1975, there have only been 20 of these moments. Otherwise, they always remains divided. Here, we got this old railway line that used to connect all of Korea when it was not yet divided. Look here, it's a train that was bombed during the war. This is the Freedom Bridge. Now it is closed because the structure is a bit run down. They have built a cable car that crosses the river. In short, it has become an attraction, very touristic, but it's still a military zone, so no joking around. In fact, as you can see, everything is completely protected by barbed wire. What you see in front of you is the old bridge that has been completely destroyed. And way over there in the distance is another layer of barbed wire. Basically, just beyond that valley is North Korea. Now we will take the bus, we will cross that bridge there, which is the only bridge that now connects the river. We will pass various military checkpoints and enter the demilitarized zone. Now, a quick overview of this. Essentially here, Americans, Chinese and Japanese have done a total disaster over the past 200 years. Do you know? Firstly, entire Korea was completely occupied by the Japanese. However, with the defeat of Germany, Japan and Italy in the Second World War, that Korea was finally liberated. The problem is that it was liberated from the south by the Americans and from the north by the communist troops. You know, this is essentially where the division really starts of entire Korea and then the troubles start. This thing about the cable car is really annoying. It was built during COVID, so it was built recently. In all this, before actually they took my passport and now I am without a passport. This thing makes me a little anxious, but for now I am calm. I mean, we are literally surrounded by tourist buses. To give you an idea of the first absurdity anyway, consider that at the surrender of Japan. The United States Strategic Command decided to divide Korea by looking at a map in National Geographic and drawing a line at the 38th parallel without following any provincial or natural borders. As in almost every part of the world, the Russians try to establish their communist state and the Americans their democracy, then what happens? I'll tell you later because now we're taking the bus. I'm really a bit excited too.
go to the border of one of the most dangerous countries in the world. They gave my passport back, so now I'm more relaxed. And finally, we are approaching the real border by crossing the bridge that you saw earlier surrounded by barbed wire. Okay, gentlemen, I'm just about to start my journey into North Korea. A friendly South Korean soldier checked my passport and we moved forward among military houses. Several outposts. Another barbed wire. All possible types of barbed wires. Again, barbed wire. Anyway, I saw some really strong soldiers. And so, for you to know, we are now inside the demilitarized zone. Consider that the situation is always tense here at the border because even though formally since 1953 the armistice has established peace, it has never technically sanctioned the end of the war. Therefore, the war is still ongoing. It's just on pause. Okay, we're back to the touristy things. Video summary of the demilitarized zone. And here is the entire war museum. Weapons, rocket launchers. Okay, from this model you can see very well, see, the two orange ones are the South Korean and North Korean borders and the one in the middle is the military border. We are here now, while over there is the joint security area, which unfortunately is currently closed. It's where in 2018 the South Korean president met with Kim Jong-un, while those two are the closest villages inside the demilitarized zone. So, the checkpoint we went through was on that bridge and this whole area is full of military personnel. Everything is designed to be as secure the border as possible in order to prevent a potential invasion and all that. The same bridge that we crossed is designed to be demolished deliberately in a matter of seconds, you know? Absurd! What we are doing now is entering the third infiltration tunnel. The only problem is that I can't bring my phone so I can't record anything. See you later! Okay, finally, we are here inside the tunnel. You see, it's really very cool. Now look! From here begins the descent and it's the tunnel dug by North Koreans with the aim of infiltrating beneath enemy lines and then attacking the South Koreans from behind. Unfortunately for them, while digging this tunnel, they hit a water pipe so the South Koreans noticed and caught them red-handed. Technically, now I can confidently say that I have been in North Korea underground. I mean, technically, I didn't really cross the military border of it because for security reasons, it is not possible for anyone to reach the last part. However, being in the demilitarized zone, which is neutral, I was neither here nor there. This concept of no man's land is really nonsensical. You see, this here is the structure of the tunnel. I have reached up to here. So we said that the initial division between the Soviet Union and the United States was the parallel which more or less has remained the current border, although it follows the territory a little bit more. From this decision, the clashes between North Korea and South Korea actually began to unfold until North Korea carried out an invasion into South Korea just like that overnight on June 25th, 1950. Here, the version told in the museums here is of North Korea, obviously as the number one villain who wanted to destroy South Korea. In reality, you know, like everything else, the blame always falls on both parties. In fact, the date of June 25th was not chosen randomly because it is exactly one year after the Jeju uprising where essentially the pro-American South Korean government, uh, in order to eliminate the Communist Party, massacred about 30,000 people, including many civilians. From here to wanting to completely destroy a country. It's a bit much, however, it's to say that. It's always a matter of balances. North Korea received support right from the start from Russia and China. The Americans were much more focused on Taiwan, so initially North Korea was making great advances. Then the Americans arrived in large numbers, and from there, the conflict intensified more and more. We continue the tour of demilitarized zone. So we took a nice climb that through the barbed wire led us to the top of a hill. This should be the most scenic point of the tour, from which you can see everything. Pyongyang is 30 minutes behind Seoul in time. We go up to the third floor. It feels like being in a hotel. Oh la la. Gentlemen, here is the view of North Korea. That over there is the entire South Korean border, while somewhere back there, as you can see, is the North Korean border. Everything in between is basically no man's land. The tower you see there is a South Korean village, while the one of the North Korean village, also known as the Propaganda Village, is essentially a village that the North Koreans have built just to show off that they are a powerful nation, when in fact it was completely fake. Let's see if I can show you with the binoculars. You see, over there is the North Korean village. And if we move over here, this is the South Korean village, there's also a giant flag. It's absurd because the two villages engage in a sort of flag war with these extremely tall flags to show off who is stronger. And during moments of tension, they set up giant speakers and compete to see who has the bigger one. The South Koreans blast information about what's happening in the world, democratic culture, and even simple things like BTS songs. Meanwhile, the North Koreans respond with even larger speakers, blaring propaganda slogans all around. A war fought with Bluetooth speakers. Incredible. Then there are military outposts. Even triple barbed wire at the border. This thing is absurd. 
It's a shame that the JSA, the area where the various presidents have shaken hands, and the village could also be visited, but now they are like closed. And that one is the first major North Korean city. Look how Soviet it is. Absurd. And so, returning to our historical summary, three years after the declaration of war, with the North claiming victory and the South claiming victory here, they're up and down. In effect, it led to a stalemate. Peace was finally signed, but the tension between them has only grown more and more over the years. South Korea opened up to the Western world and gradually became a true democracy, becoming today one of the most developed countries in the world, as you have seen in the videos I made in Seoul, while North Korea, on the other hand, has remained super mega closed off. Yes, there are tourist tours, but it's not open at all. And so, what might seem like peaceful countryside behind me is actually one of the most totalitarian countries in the world, where human rights are among the least protected in the world, and, moreover, with an extremely high poverty rate. And all this division has actually made North Korea one of the most dangerous countries in the entire world, equipped with nuclear weapons, which is rapidly increasing with time. And Kim Jong-un really acts tough with his military drills and threatens the entire world, even though in reality he controls a very poor small country that is incapable of producing anything. It's actually absurd to see it with your own eyes. Incredible. The final stop is the largest village in the demilitarized zone, which is a farming village of approximately 400 people. Also, it has now became a hub for tourist buses, and they have transformed tourism into a business. Moreover, I didn't know this, but North Korea still shares a small border with Russia to the east. Another interesting thing is the mandatory military conscription in both Koreas, because there is this fear that one Korea might invade the other. However, in South Korea, it's 18 months, while in the north, it's actually 10 years for males and 7 years for the females. You might be wondering, what's the situation now? It's a mess. On one hand, in recent years, there has been a lot of openness with symbolic meetings with the Olympics. But the new South Korean president is from the Conservative Party, so he is strongly against North Korea. And so, like, we are dividing again. But who knows, maybe in 20 years, someone looking back at this video will say, Ah, there was a border, but how we perhaps see the Berlin Wall. When my parents were born, Berlin was divided, which is absurd. However, I find it really fascinating, because when we see Kim Jong-un on television acting like a phenomenon, he is definitely not a person to admire at all, and he is certainly causing disaster after disaster from a long time. However, if North Korea is in the situation it is in, it's also due to a whole set of things that have happened over the last hundred years. History is written by the victors. Consider that the United States came very close to dropping an atomic bomb on North Korea. And the reports from the Korean War remain secret until not so long ago. Just a little while back, there are still some events that are not very clear. Having said that, these big players have even turned this stuff into a tourist attraction. Now, I've given you a quick overview, simplifying a lot and surely making many inaccuracies. But you have the internet. Use it to delve deeper because it's really a fascinating topic. And it helps you grasp a lot about the current situation. So from Jackie, from this border of the North Korea, that's all. Maybe one day we will also go to North Korea. My friend Giuseppe has been there. If you haven't seen the video Progetto Happiness, North Korea, just search for it. There's this incredible organized tour by the government. An incredible story. It is very interesting, super fascinating, and also a bit unsettling. What an absurd world of wars, of borders, of tensions. Well, let's hope for the best in the future. We will see each other very soon with less serious and much more sillier things. But I really wanted to make this video. <laughs>